The Tour de France just finished, but the Vuelta a España is already upon us. It departs from Burgos, and the first stage is prologue length, but wasn't called a prologue. It was a TT, seven kilometers long. It starts with a climb up to the hill behind Burgos Cathedral, where the TT leaves, and then comes back down to descend. Pretty good road surface, and then flat for the last three to four kilometers. Roglic was the heavy, heavy favorite for this TT. We've got Ineos here at the Vuelta with a lot of big names. Pidcock, Bernal, Carapaz, Adam Yates. If you want my full Vuelta Espana preview, it's on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. That's a separate YouTube channel or on podcast plays. It's not too late. We just had the prologue. We have also Bahrain Victorious with a really deep team. Mikel Landa, the leader on paper, but Maybe you won't be in future stages, but it kicked off in really, really hot conditions. It's really hot in Spain at the moment. The guys who went earlier, in my view, had a pretty big disadvantage. I'm talking it's like 40, 38 degrees out there. And then Roglic left at like 8.50 at night. But Yates initially went into the hot seat with quite a good time, similar to his UAE performance. Lander chose to go early and did not set a good time, even though he had some slots later and maybe the cooler temperatures. Dylan Van Bala knocked his teammate Adam Yates off the hot seat by nine seconds. Yates seemed pretty happy about that. Actually, he got to go back to the hotel and have a cold shower. But then the man of the moment, the myth, the legend, winner of a stage at Basque Country where a took two stages this year, Alex Aramburu on Astana Premier Tech. I'm not sure where he'll be next season. Maybe he'll get re-signed. He did a really quick punchy ascent and then absolutely nailed the descent section of this TT and actually put a big amount of time into Dylan Van Baal considering how short this TT is, setting a time of 8.38.31. He would sit in the hot seat, literal hot seat, for hours, the poor guy, waiting to see if he would both take the stage win and the red jersey after stage one. But other GC contenders, we had to do the TT. And let me know down below, do you think, who do you think the leader is for Ineos? Pidcock seemed to take it pretty easy, where he literally free will the TT today. Who do you think the leader is for Ineos? Is it Carapaz, Bernal, or Yates? For DSM, it's clearly Roman Bardet. He won the stage, his first win for quite a while in Vuelta Burgos, but he crashed in the process, and that seemed to he had a sore back or something for the last stage, but he did one of his best TTs for quite a while, finishing only 11 seconds after Alex Aaron Brew. And maybe that said something about this sort of course. You needed to have good punch on the initial climb. You needed to back yourself on the descent. Alexander Vlasov, who's going to Bora Hansgrohe this year, but doing the Vuelta for Astana, still his team, backed up his Paris Niche TT performance, the second best GC contender on the day. And Enric Mast did a really good TT, apart from it nearly was a bit of a disaster. That pedal strike, that corner caused a few problems for quite a few riders. Enric Mast would only lose 18 seconds to roll, which would beat the likes of Adam Yates, his teammate Miguel Angel Lopez. I think a pretty solid TT for Enric Mas. Lopez, though, he was within the band of most of the GC contenders, around 20 to 25, 26 seconds behind Primoz Roglic. Certainly not a disaster for him. Egan Bernal, a little bit worse. I mean, he's tried to temper expectations. If you've been reading some of the interviews before the Vuelta Espana, saying, oh, well, Adam Yates has got the best shape. This is his A target priority for this year. He doesn't know how we'll go doing two Grand Tours in a single year. He's never done it before, but he lost 27 seconds to Roglic. Again, not a disaster. You can't lose the welter on this stage, nor win it. And I'll say about a par performance for Egan Bonal. The TT, certainly not his strong suit. Whereas another young rider, Onda Kearney Quickstep, Andre Bagioli, did a very good TT, the best of the young riders. Finishing six seconds after Aaron Brew. Watch out for him if he's in a break at this welter, or even on stage six out of the GC group. Another rider who's been strong all season, Slovenian on Bahrain. Trutnik, just like his compatriot Morich, finished just two seconds after Aaron Baru. And another man who was supposed to do well, maybe even come top five, Ludvigsen, the Swede on Groupama FTJ. He had a mechanical, it looked like off the ramp, but then he kept riding. I'm not sure if any eagle-eyed people can see, because I can't. Apparently his free wheel or sprocket had a problem or something. He had to change bikes. He still only finished like 20, 25 seconds after Primoz Roglic, who was looking relaxed, which is the scariest sight in sports, seeing relaxed smiling Rogler. He's got the gold helmet on, the cursed helmet, which he uncursed. He's got the new paint job after he brought the gold medal back from the Olympics. Sorry I didn't have the highlight rights for the Olympics. We aren't sort of at that level just yet. We'll get there eventually, but the podcast 
had to suffice. But Roglic didn't set the best time on the climbing section of the course. It was actually his teammate Sepp Kuss who went to the, into the leader of the mountains jersey. He did a really good prologue. Roglic was second on that section and then the quickest on the descent or on the flatter section. If I had to guess, it's not broken up in the actual data, but if I had to guess, Aaron Brew was a little bit quicker on the descent and Roglic made up more than enough on the flatter section, flat three kilometers in the run into the finish. He was the favorite for the stage. His TT is one of the bedrocks of his GC success, and he's taking, this is real time. If you say someone lost 25, 35 seconds on a climb to somebody, you'd say they're borderline capitulating, given how tight gaps can be, particularly if you look at the Vuelta last year, and Roglic beats Aaron Baru, heartbreak for him with the last rider to cross the line, beating him by six seconds. We've got stage three, which really suits Primoz Rolich, as well as stage six. He looks on course for taking multiple stages at this year's Vuelta Espana, the back-to-back -back winner. Here's the stage results. Primoz Roglic winning the TT by six seconds out of Tratnik. Scully, a good performance. Fourth, then Cherny Van Bala, Bajoli, Craddock, Michael Matthews, and Vlasov. So Roglic has enough of a gap now, and none of the other sprinters got close enough to him, like Matthews, that if it's a normal sprint stage tomorrow, which I'll preview in a second, he should be keeping this jersey through till pick on Blanco. Maybe Jumbo Visma let her break up the road to take the jersey. But here's the actual GC contender standings, thanks to La Flamme Rouge for putting this together. Roglic, then Vlasov, Kuz, Bardet, Mars at 14, 15, 17, and 18. Mars there is a typo, so slightly better than expected performances for all of those riders. And it's really Lander and Carthy that are the outliers finishing over 30 seconds behind Roglic. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed with that given that there was a hill in this course for them. But anyway, here's a characteristically enlightening soundbite from Roglic after the stage win. Today was only uh, seven kilometers, not much compared to the Olympic Games. <coughs> How confident were you on seven kilometers? Uh, whew. Let's say seven, but still uh, super hard. Huh? You don't wish for more when you cross the line. So, uh, yeah, it's hard. Huh? It's uh, just uh, all out from the start till the finish. Tomorrow stage, as I said, if you look at the profile, it's supposed to be a sprint stage. I don't even think there's any categorized climbs in it. Once again, finishing in the Burgos region. The question is crosswinds. Now, the direction looks right on the forecast. It's hot again, but it's whether the wind is going to be strong enough in the exposed sections. And do we even have the teams to create echelons here? No Kvyatkovsky or Rowe. A lot of pressure on Dylan Van Baal, who did a good TT today for Ineos, if that's where they want to take back some time. But otherwise, we've got Fabio Jakobsen looked in good form at Tour de Wallony, Jasper Phillips, and he actually crashed today on the descent, as well as his lead-out man, Alexander Krieger. So hopefully both those Alperson guys are okay. We also have Arno Demar and Michael Matthews. So it'll likely be a sprint, but there might be some crosswind nervousness as well. So tune in tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this recap video, and I'll see you with the Stage 2 highlights tomorrow. Ciao.